You see, in reality, they've already found what they've, whatever they're going to have for a bow shock is just basically the outside wall edge of the hydrogen wall that we know that we're trapped in. Okay, not really trapped. It's good that we're here because otherwise, without the heat of the sun, we wouldn't have life as we know it. Okay, Mars has too much radio active. Correct, radioactive. Okay, Mars is too radioactive. Okay, we're still studying. We need to study all this. Uh, I will show you stuff at Jupiter in a little while. The moons and also Saturn. It's the moons and Jupiter and Saturn is where future life will be. Okay, uh, besides living on Earth. Okay, and it'll be back and forth, back and forth. Maybe Mars, but the idea of Mars is going to be the slum. Too much radioactivity. Already know that. Okay, we know that for a fact. Here I actually just showed us this. So no matter what, Boshock is way, we already know where it's at. Okay, so this is in perspective, this is from JPL. Alpha Centauri, remember I've told you Alpha Centauri BB is a planetoid object that's not that far away. Okay, it's only 10.6, not even that, it's actually at this inner fringe of 10 IU. It's only four light years away. Okay. So let's blow Boshock out of the out of the water because basically they've been saying, oh, we haven't found Boshock yet. Well, this is BS because they already know that the only shock that they've got, they're looking for other shock waves that they'll end up getting out in space. And because I'm going to show you how flipping far out in space that they flipping actually are. Okay. So what we've got is basically showing you right here that actual factor Voyager one is way the hell out in space. 123 AU. Okay. Now let's go back and factual here. Okay. This isn't factual. This is a new drawing of 2005 by astronomy. Voyager, way the hell out. Okay. Way the hell out. Past terminal shock, past bow shock. Okay. So what they're doing is you're, even though this is 2005, that no one has turned around and told you straight up out and that the idea that Pioneer. 11 and Pioneer 10 and Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 are way the hell out. Okay, so bow shock, yeah, they're just basically looking for another shock wave and then they'll end up calling it whatever because they already figure that they've, they they already know they call this bow shock of just getting past the hydrogen wall that in Voyager and all those satellites are out there. Now, good example, Voyager is way the hell out, 123 IU. I'm going to give you the map. Okay, there's the launch date. I can even give you a little bit more information there. We'll hit that. And basically, what it did is the factual that it went out past Saturn on its last loop out. So, straight out past Saturn. So, it's went by all these hyperbolic stars that I've just recently showed you and everything like that because there's your orbital path. And it's basically just, they've just flung it out straight out into space basically a bullet going through space and they still get telemetry from it okay they're still getting telemetry from her way the heck out in space okay now this is how often they talk about it okay and this is just basically giving you an actual factual that they actually okay and right now currently it's in Ophicus okay and then every time someone does a propaganda bullshit line then Wikipedia will end up and people will start looking at it and seeing a bunch of information on it and start it'll spike 2011 somebody made an article boom 2009 and everything like that well Voyager's way the hell out there now this is just the constellation that it's currently in okay and this is where I got my telescope at okay so factual okay that it's this flipping far out in space now I'm going to show you more examples Voyager 2 I believe I have a chand if I got up on this one here Okay, Chandra is basically a telescope that we have that's up at 64,934 miles. That's the average altitude of this thing out in space, it's in a deep space orbit. Okay. Now, I'll give you the last of the data on it. And it's currently visible. Uh, usually, I got a uh, not currently visible at my telescope. Otherwise, I'd be able to give you. Uh, so basically above Earth, there you go. I otherwise be able to give you a constellation map. Okay. So now, factually, we got Pioneer 10. Okay. In 11, Pioneer 10 left out at, at Jupiter and went the hell out and into space. 
Saturn on a Pioneer 11. And then they shot him out into space, traveling way the hell out. 40 years ago, these are the oldest ones. Now currently, our, Pi our Voyager 1 and 2 are farther out than the 108 and the 86.3 AU that those are. That vo and then we get in here to looking at Voyager 1 again. Okay. It's 123 AU out. Factually, actually. Boshock was out at 10 and a quarter AU. We have asteroid belt there. Okay. But basically that asteroid belt, it goes all the way out and even exceeds the, our dust particle asteroid belt is even outside the Milky Way galaxy. Okay? It's basically a milkshake. Everything is is a take a milkshake, don't waste your money, uh, go get some inexpensive material that you could get some sawdust, mix it with water, and then go throw it on the ground. That's space. That's how things basically in Big Bangs is getting blown out of the water by us knowing all this data. Okay? They're talking about Big Bangs recently, and uh, factually, Big Bangs is what they need to start talking about. They, they're talking about Big Bang, correctly? Correct. They're talking about Big Bang. Well, Big Bang, there wasn't just a Big Bang, okay? The space is too infinite in size and so forth and everything like that, and then the electrical that we know and the connection. So every galaxy is like a milkshake spilt on the ground, whether you spill it on a basketball court, whether you spill it on concrete, vinyl, carpet, a chair, anything in, sp in Earth on our atmosphere. And then, like I say, to make it inexpensive, just go ahead and get a, a bunch of sawdust, throw it in and mix it up in water, and then throw it on the ground. Okay, that's a galaxy. Okay, that's the orbit path of two Voyager 2. Voyager 2 is 101 AU out in space. Okay? So this thing that they're saying that they have not found bow shock, well, they did find a shock wave, i.e., they found a shock wave. Now I'm getting. I need to get back to our diagram right here. Okay, they found a shock wave at 10.2. They're looking for whatever they're figuring it's going to be a bow shock, and they know factually that there's really not going to be a bow shock of our solar system because our solar system is tied to Alpha Centauri. A, okay, that's the closest star that we know of so far right now because it's only 10.5 AU out. Now, what I'll do is we'll computate and we'll find out what they actually list as our closest star. Okay, I've got actually a photo data of that. So what it all comes down to, which is you can imagine that this is more than likely Voyager 1 or Voyager 2 or Pioneer out there, it doesn't really matter, okay? And then they are studying and know all these Van Allen belts, magneticals, all the way from the sun. And then these are our orbitals. This is more than likely Earth right there. Okay, well, it won't be exact, but that's probably Earth right there. And that's the sun. And then we are tied to... And then basically this is going out. And actually this isn't that far out. This is not like Voyager or Pioneer uh, 10 or 11 or Voyager 1 or 2. In a theory, this is basically an artist rendition, but factually, that this is like the electrical pattern of the Van Allen belts from the sun from a supergiant star that's way out in space, okay, within our Milky Way galaxy, okay? So, factually, they're really filling you full of a bunch of poop when they're starting to tell you about asteroids, the killer asteroids. I've already showed you that we have asteroid fields, okay, and that the distances of these objects that we have man-made thrown out there are at like 123 IU out, okay? And then you get the distances map here that can give you a good idea of what we got going on with size. So, and then I've already showed you too recently that Mercury is way the heck closer far in, okay? Mercury is the closest thing that we have between the Sun, and Mercury and Venus are in here and they're not listed, okay? 
and I gave you the distances on Mercury in millions of kilometers from the Sun. And then we put it in our probes closer and closer to the Sun and getting a closer and closer look. And then remember Mercury and then these are satellites here and the dates and time when they're basically out there. And this is the millions of kilometers that just Mercury alone is from the Sun. Okay, so there's six million kilometers from even the closest probe that we're going to have in 2018 that we'll have that for in 2015 pretty soon we're going to have that one up there and that's the sun over there so that's the idea that there's so much damn flipping distance between just these probes that are way the hell out in front of mercury which mercury is the closest object that we know of that we can see with a telescope of luminosity we're sh i'm showing you all kinds of objects every day that we're seeing between our the sun and earth from the navy telescopes in the soho and the sechi so forth so the actual factual when i'm showing you these shots from out that these videos that i'm showing you and giving you the actual factual that we have a hyperbolic star stars that are up by saturn and that's basically one of them right there i'll hit play on this real fast and we'll just come back up to this that we've pretty much found that more than factually that we have hyperbolic stars that are our next closest star to us and are probably just over at Saturn. Okay, so let's get the distance on Saturn. And we're at 9.99, and you can get these this action here that I was showing you in the video. And then I'll just pump out and I'll escape from this, just the factual. Okay, that that's the hyperbolic stars that they're above Saturn that you're seeing out there. And there's a bunch of them, as I showed. If you've seen them blinging on Saturn, and, and it's just a star belt. It's a belt. That's all belts, just like a radial tire, ladies and gentlemen, out there in space. So actual factual, I'll get out of this down to like 200 and come down on this and remember that we have this object by this earth that we've been getting and seeing lately okay and also all of the bigger supergiant energy gamma ray flashes that we're getting that are coming through our solar system also i.e. also a falling star pan stars is more than likely a falling star and the factual that this object here I've got two or three I'm gonna have like a four or five videos today that I'm gonna be putting up today so factually, I want to thank the Prairie uh, Astronomical Society, and basically this is a great example of a hyperbolic star. Again, that is the Prairie uh, Astrological Society, okay, and they're in the Midwest. So they got a great example of a hyperbolic star. So basically that's what we're seeing up at Saturn. And then factually, what I'll be able to show you on our stars. Now remember, this is like 17 light years away as El Terre, okay? So we have more than likely at Saturn found a closer star than its hyperbolic star belt that's over by Saturn. Okay, factually on all the videos that you're seeing me recently showing you underneath that. Because basically here's the factual of Alpha Centauri, okay? And basically, I just need to get the magnifier out of the way there. Uh, I'm going to give you a great example of what I've figured out on, on a, a moon of Jupiter also. Okay, so factually, Alpha Centauri is way out behind Mars. This is the sun for comparison, and all these sizes are correct, except for the orbits, okay? But not the orbits, but the stars are the size, and these are all stars, okay? So, Alpha... Alpha Centauri B is not Alpha Centauri BB. Alpha Centauri BB is the planet to known to probably be habitable that that orbits at a very large. And if you see the Alpha Centauri A, okay, that's basically there, and that's its rotation, and it rotates around. And remember, it rotates this way, just like how the uh, the Earth, the, like the Sun rotates, okay, because the Sun rotates basically to the right. Okay, when you're looking at the sun, it rotates to the right. Okay, Proximity Centauri is also a star. Now look at Alpha Centauri B is a star, and see it rotates, and it actually goes through the orbit or plane of Saturn, okay, when it does its rotation. Because it actually comes through our solar system, you see. So all solar systems are actually tied together, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so sp stick with uh, Bino Black for the facts, okay. And uh, NASA is always going to keep you lost in the stars. Okay, so actual factual, and uh, I love every branch of the U.S. military, and I love everything that NASA does. I just don't go for the making you lost in space. Okay.
I won't leave you lost in space. It's Vino Black, and I'm going to have a great video.